All right, I guess I'll do another one of these videos. Uh, I, I used to call them recent book purchases, so I guess I'll call this one recent book purchases number four or five, whichever one it is. Uh, but it's like a, a book update. Um, I haven't been reading that much lately, which is part of the part of the reason why it's been so long since I made one of these videos. But also, I, I really am not sure if there is an interest in this. But I haven't been making it in, in so long, so I thought that I would make one more. But like I said, I haven't been reading much. Uh, I could blame it on, sc on school, that I've been busy with school. <laughs> but I've had time to read, so I'm not going to blame it on that. However, I did plan on... Because now it's summer, I actually had my last day in school today. Now I have almost three months of summer. Uh, summer break. Um, but So, so I have planned on reading a lot more uh, this summer. So I might make a video at the end of the summer another book update, you know, talking about what I've read over the summer, so it's not going to be as long until the next one. But I do have books that I've read uh, over, well, since whenever the last one was. I think it's been like a year, because one of these books I read last summer. Um, anyway, we'll see uh, how this goes. Uh, so, there are books that I read for school as well, but I'll show those anyway. Uh, at least a few, a couple of them. First, The Exorcist, which I chose to read on my own. I would I would have read this anyway on my spare time, but this was for English class, so this is in English. Um, some of them might be in Swedish, but um, this uh, I I love the movie and I've been wanting to read the book, so I thought that I'd take the opportunity to do so uh, in school or you know, um, and I thought that it was. Uh, in a, I, I feel like it's kind of inevita inevitable to not to picture the um, images from the movie when I read, read the book. It uh, would have been more interesting to do it in the other order, maybe. But, yeah, in a way. But, um, yeah, it's uh, the, mov the movie is very truthful to the book. I actually made some sort of vlog video where I talked about the book and the movie. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's good. <laughs> I definitely uh, liked the book, although having seen the movie, it's not that different, you know. But of course, it, it's all all comes from the book originally. So um, then we have another one that I read for Swedish class, or for Swedish class. This was English class. Uh, Brothers Lionheart, and this is this is in Swedish, but you can easily easily find this in English. And it's by the author um, Astrid Lindgren, if you can see that. Um, she's a very famous author in Sweden, and I believe pretty well known internationally too. She made Pippi Longstocking for one thing, and um, yeah, um, this is uh, I actually just filmed a Swedish video. I mean, Swedish movie update video, I guess you could say. And I talked about the um, the movie based on this. So if you saw that, then this will be a rep you know I'll, I'll talk about the plot again. But anyway. <laughs> Um, basically, it's about these two brothers. Uh, the younger brother, he's um, he's sick. He he has some sort of illness, which means that he will die pretty soon. So it starts off pretty pretty. It's it's a kind of a downer in the beginning, you could say, uh, and then it gets even worse because there's a fire that breaks out or a fire is, um, you know, started in their building in their apartment building where where where, where they live. So the older brother, who is caring, cares very much for his younger brother, he takes him in his arms because he can't walk, uh, and he jumps out of the window, which results in the brother dying, the, the older brother dying, uh, and he goes to this afterworld, afterlife, uh, afterlife, and, and in, a, in a world called Nangiala, and uh, eventually the brother, the little brother, dies too, and he goes there to join him. And uh, it's about good and evil. There's a dragon here on the cover. The dragon in the movie is not as cool <laughs> as this dragon, to say the least. I think they would would be a cool idea to remake this with a bigger budget, maybe a rated rated R even. But I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, actually, ra the the rated R part is not gonna happen. But actually, I did read that there was a project of making this again. I uh, don't know if it's actually been made or if it's just you know, in the very early works, and it might fall apart. Uh, who knows? But um, 
yeah and it's about it's about the love between brotherly love or the love between the brothers which is very clear and that is what um, the author also the the inspiration to why she she wrote it i did not really i don't i, I don't really care for it to be honest I'll, well i'm gonna take that back um i did mention this when we talked about it in school uh i um love the ending it binds the um story together very well uh but i don't i'm not a fan of the language it is a children's book which i i could have mentioned uh, earlier but so the language is definitely directed towards children the writer she writes intentionally so that children uh, are supposed to be able to understand better and sympathize more easier with the characters and stuff so uh but it's it's not bad but you know uh, then we have something vastly different, which I have shown you in um, my... I got this for Christmas, so I showed you that in the Christmas video actually, but I uh, finished this a while back, it's pretty heavy, called Swedish Death Metal by Daniel Ekerot, which is... A, he's a Swedish guy, but he, he wrote, wrote this in English. Uh, and it's about... Uh, it sort of uh, chronicles the Swedish underground uh, extreme music scene uh, from the beginning, from the punk era up to the death metal era. The, the death metal era. Uh, the movie is about the death metal scene, of course, but he has to start with the roots. So he talks about that for a while before he get, he gets into the death metal, uh, and he 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 uh, only talks about the years. Uh, I don't know if it says so here, but pretty much the um, mainly the first wave, maybe the second too. But from 1980 something to 1994 maybe that's where he stops. Uh, I'm not in, not, not entirely sure when he stops, but somewhere around there. And um, yeah, he's not the, not the best writer. I mean, he he writes good stuff, but he his language is not you know he's not a a professional writer. Uh, so I mean, you know. Uh, but it's still a lot of fun to read and as you can see here there are a lot of pictures too and uh, basically it, it, it consists a lot of uh, interviews with band members and people who ran different uh, things like people who had some uh, fan scenes which were magazines um, underground magazines released independently uh, about underground music you know extreme metal and stuff um, because there wasn't a whole lot of interest in it, so people had to do it independently, I guess. But um, yeah, it's and then it's about the people. They sort of uh, the people are that are being interviewed, uh, mainly band members, but also people, you know, like I said, who had fan scenes. Um, some men members had fan scenes too, so some of them had both. But also like a guy who had like a recording studio, maybe, and a guy who people various people who are connected to the scene somehow they um recall events and uh, how things were back then and if you're into if you're interested in swedish death metal or death metal in general uh, either if if you already know a lot about this or if you don't know anything about it i think it could be a fun read either way um i found out about a lot of a lot of bands i haven't had the time yet to listen to all of them I, w I intended to, but I never ended up doing so, but anyway, uh, this one I also got for Christmas, and it is uh, The Stranger by Albert Camus, and I have a, I don't know what to say about this, it's uh, it's ex existentialism, which I've not really uh, ventured into before, uh, fairly, I feel like it's fairly complicated stuff, pretty deep stuff <laughs> is good, I definitely liked it. Uh, I don't know how if I can interpret it altogether, but I feel like it changes. It has sort of two parts. Yeah, you can see here, first part, and then after the first part, uh, it changes fairly dramatically. The language is very minimalistic or so, whatever in the first part. Resemble, I mean, reminded me of Hemingway, and then in the second part, it rather reminded me of Kafka. You know the sentences are a lot more complicated, and thing, things just get more complicated. And it ends with some fairly 
complex uh, philosophy, at least to me. Um, so definitely a book that could be worth reading again someday. Um, so I can't say more about it right now, but uh, it's very interesting and I did like it. Speaking of Kafka, we have <laughs> three books here. I'll just just show them all at once. Uh, no, sorry, not not three, two. And it is uh, the release by the Swedish label uh, Bakhol, and they've done a very good job releasing. I don't know exactly how many, but I, th I believe somewhere between 15 and 20 of the volumes. They look exactly like this, and I have another. I have another. I have another two of these in on my in my bookshelf. So, got two more here. These are mainly uh, shorts. Um, let's see here. This is. Um, this one contains. A hunger artist is what it's called, but there are so much more than a hunger artist. Because if you can, you see the sort of uh, index or um, table of contents or whatever here. And this is the hunger artist starts at page 208 and ends. Well, I don't know. It's not many pages, so I don't. Let's let's actually let's have a look here. The book is called A Hunger Artist, but it starts here and ends there. Does it? Well, it says four histories. Four stories, I mean. <laughs> yeah, okay, here. No. Yes. Two here or something. Anyway, um, so there are a lot of other stuff too. Just a bunch of short stories that Kafka wrote. Um, but this one, I believe this one mainly contains stuff that he didn't really finish. Um, yeah, we can see here just, just says text from 1920, 1921, 22. There's a whole lot of, of stuff. Uh, like I can show you some examples. Hopefully I'll find some examples. Because uh, a lot of the stuff he wrote he didn't finish. Uh, yeah, here you can just see, just says text from 1922, and most of them don't have titles. So this is one, and then there's a gap here. This is one, and here this is this is one, and then it just says, um, you know, that he he stopped writing it, you know, cancelled, uh, abrupt. I don't know the word. I should know, but I don't. Uh, so this is everything he wrote <laughs> about this. I didn't. I guess he. He thought like, well, he started something. Then he knew he was like, no, fuck this, this sucks. He wrote something else, and there's a lot of, of of stuff, you know, just a lot of different ideas that he had. Some longer than others, as you can see. Uh, a lot of them are, you can see, cancelled or, you know, he didn't believe in the idea anymore or whatever. This one too, and then this one, and that's very interesting. Uh, however, the stories themselves, not always that in, that that, in, that interesting. I didn't read all of them, definitely not. I, I had a look through this, pretty much. I uh, didn't read everything, maybe half, I don't know, maybe not even that. Uh, but this was also last summer that I read this, so... Like I said, it's been a while since I since I read. Then this I also read for school last, last fall, and it is uh, The Sun Also Rises, I believe the English title is. By Ernest Hemingway, and I mentioned Hemingway when I <laughs> actually I mentioned Hemingway and Kafka when I talked about this one. I don't have a whole lot of, a whole lot of references, <laughs> but th those references kind of worked for me. This one, um, yeah, you don't get a whole lot of information about the characters. You have to re read between the lines a lot, which is a very characteristic feature or whatever with Hemingway and. Uh, Shit loads of dialogue. Uh, pretty much two thirds, I think, of the mo of the book is purely dialogue, and uh, you sort of need to figure out what's going on through the dialogue, even though it it's not mentioned directly. Um, so, but I like it. I mean, I had, I I don't know, I don't have a whole lot to say about it, but at some parts, I really 
but was bothered by the language by by his way of writing because I didn't really enjoy it that much but other when, when not in other parts I found myself really enjoying it because he, he has his own way of telling the story anyway uh, then we have something very different the bro code <laughs> Pony Stinson with Matt Kuhn I don't think did I read all of this there are two of them one is called something else now, I believe I read all of this actually uh, the other one uh, actually I have the other one somewhere uh, never mind I, I can't find it but um, the other one is called uh, oh I don't remember but there are two of them and the other one I did not really enjoy that much so I never finished it but this one I believe that I w read through it doesn't take that long. I think I read it. Uh, you know, it took me two uh, readings. You know, probably will take a lot of people one reading. Uh, it doesn't take many hours to get, get through this. Uh, anyway, so it, it, it's 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 Barney Stinson's thoughts, basically, written by Matt Kuhn, I guess. Uh, I guess he might be a might be a writer in the show. Um, so yeah, it's I didn't didn't actually buy this myself. This one, along with the other one, was uh, was given to me by my sister and my stepmom uh, after they had been in Stockholm. And they bought it in the sci-fi bookstore, I think. Um, but uh, it, this was kind of fun. Then we have uh, also for school uh, the Hobbit, which um, I didn't really like that much, to be honest. It kind of kind of unfortunate though um, when I read books for school sometimes I don't enjoy them as much as I maybe would have if I read them on my own time but I really don't enjoy his language that much how the way he this is the Swedish translation by the way a new translation too but um, the way he describes nature a lot I mean I know that's common for fantasy but I I can't really get into it that much some of the stuff I kind of liked but most of it I was struggling to get through, so unfortunately I can't say I liked it. Anyway, then we got more fantasy, but this is comedic, so this one I really enjoyed. This one I read last summer, uh, The Light Fantastic by Terry, pa Terry Pratchett. I did an unboxing video. This is the number two of the Discworld series, uh, and I did an, an unboxing video some months ago where I, I unboxed three, another three Discworld uh, books, uh, and I'm I, I have actually not even read one of them yet, but I have started with the one of them now. Uh, so I am I am reading another one, but this one is uh, yeah it's not as good as the first one. This one follows the first novel, you know right you know. Uh, it, it picks up where the first one started, whereas a lot of other ones they are, you know, they're complete, completely different stories. Uh, so you can read them in, in, in any order, pretty much. Uh, although you might gain some stuff from re reading them in chrono chronological order. But um, yeah, a lot of fun, definitely. If you haven't read it, it's uh, takes place on <laughs> a, a flat, a disc world, a flat world. You know, the way we perceived the way we thought the world was way back. Um, uh, this world is sta it, it's lying on, it's resting on the backs of four elephants, maybe four, four or two elephants um, and the elephants are standing on a giant turtle uh, floating in, in space with uh, a destination in mind but nobody knows it. <laughs> So, yeah, it's um, I mean humor all the way all 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 over this, but of course obviously it's very fantasy sci-fi-ish too. Then we got the last one, which is uh, I must have read this way back. Anyway, Simpsons comics. This one is the, the Royale one. I have another one which I've had forever too, but I haven't finished it yet for some reason. Um, but yeah, just a bunch of Simpsons stories. I have a whole bunch of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, about 15. And uh, they're a lot of fun, but um, 
I haven't, yeah, I have to get into them again. I have to get back into reading these because I haven't been enjoying the last one that I got too much. But anyway, so that's another book update. Um, I don't know if this was any, if this was a good idea or not. You tell me. But <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. So yeah, <laughs> thank you for watching.